So this is now the part 2 of your Rule 110 Prosecution of Offenses. We are done with Section 1, the Institution of Criminal Actions. Take note of this, tinatanong yan sa bar exams. We are also done with Section 2, the General Requirements of Your Complaint or Information. And Section 3 is the definition of your complaint. Section 4 is the definition of your information. Section 3 and 4, tinatanong din sa bar exams. Most likely, ang tinatanong dyan is the difference between the two. So let us go now to your Section 5, Who Must Prosecute Your Criminal Actions. Section 5 is very long if you are going to read it because there are 6 paragraphs. But here is a quick overview of your Section 5. Who tries a criminal case? Answer is the fiscal or your public prosecutor. But of course, this is only the general rule. There is an exception and the exception is private prosecutor may be allowed to try also a criminal case. Next, Section 5 also talks about your private crimes. Pagdating sa private crimes like adultery, concubinage, seduction, abduction, acts of lasciviousness, then who must institute this one? This is or this can be answered by your Article 344 of the Revised Penal Code. So your Article 344 of the RPC is the substantial law and your Section 5 of Rule 110 is your procedural law. So we go now to the public prosecutor or your fiscal. Sino ba itong fiscal? Remember ha, your fiscal or your public prosecutor is a lawyer and his employer is the government. His employer is the government, particularly the Department of Justice. If you recall your political law, diba, there are three branches of the government that is the legislative the executive, and then the judicial branch of the government. Your Department of Justice is under the executive branch of the government. Wag malito, yung fiscal is under the executive branch of the government and not under the judicial branch of the government. And if you read further the mandate of the Department of Justice, what is the mandate of the DOJ? The DOJ is the government's principal law agency and as such, the DOJ should serve as the government's prosecution arm and administers the government's criminal justice system by investigating crimes, prosecuting offenders, and overseeing the correctional system. That is the reason why if you read your Section 5 of Rule 110 of um, asking the question of who must prosecute criminal actions, then the answer is the public prosecutor because this is the mandate of the DOJ. They are going to prosecute offenders. Kaya ang sinasabi ng Section 5, all criminal actions, walang exception ha, lahat ng criminal cases, whether commenced by a complaint or commenced by an information shall be prosecuted under the direction and control of the public prosecutor. Again, under the direction and control of the public prosecutor. Memorize this one. Dapat ito ang maisulat ninyo sa inyong mga booklet. In a criminal case, again, the plaintiff is not the offended party. The plaintiff is hindi yung taong nirape, hindi yung taong ninakawan, hindi yung relatives ng taong pinatay. Your plaintiff is the people of the Philippines. And who represents the people of the Philippines? Answer is the public prosecutor. The public prosecutor represents the people of the Philippines. Kaya sa isang criminal case, ang bidang abogado, ang bidang abogado is the public prosecutor. Section 5 is telling us that all criminal cases shall be prosecuted under the direction and control of the public prosecutor. Kaya again, 
ang bidang abogado sa isang criminal case is the public prosecutor. But this is only the general rule. This is only the general rule because a private prosecutor can be a bida in a criminal case. But first, who is a private prosecutor? Your private prosecutor is the lawyer hired by the offended party. Yung offended party kasi, minsan, meron naman palang kamag-anak, merong kapatid, or tatay, or pinsan na abogado, or merong boyfriend, then mas gusto nilang yun ang mag-try ng criminal case. But if there is a private prosecutor in a criminal case, then ang role lang ni private prosecutor is supporting the public prosecutor. Hindi siya pwedeng maging bida. Kaya kung, kung dun sa mga tanong kung sino ang ilalagay sa witness stand, who will conduct the trial, who will do the questioning, that is all under the control and direction of the public prosecutor. Walang magiging papel doon si private prosecutor except to support the public prosecutor. But Section 5 is telling us that your private prosecutor can become a bida in a criminal case. And when uh, uh, what are those instances wherein your private prosecutor can be a bida? First is in case of heavy work schedule of the public prosecutor or, or take note in the event of lack of public prosecutors. So in these two instances, pwedeng maging bida si private lawyer. But do not stop here because the rule also uh, requires you to get two things. First is written authority. The written authority should be coming from the chief of the prosecution office or the regional state prosecutor. And aside from the written authority, it must be approved by the court. So these are the requirements for the private prosecutor to become a bida in a criminal case. Once the private prosecutor has the written authority and this written authority is approved by the court, then ano ang sinasabi ng Section 5? Your private prosecutor is now the bida in a criminal case. He is now authorized to prosecute the criminal action. And if you are going to read further Section 5, ang sinasabi dyan is the private prosecutor shall continue to prosecute the case up to the end of the trial even in the absence of a public prosecutor unless the authority is revoked or otherwise withdrawn. For you to understand better this provision, let me just illustrate. In a criminal case, of course, you have the judge and then the fiscal is the uh, lawyer representing the people of the Philippines and then you have the lawyer of the accused. Pag may pera si akusado, then he can hire a private lawyer. Pag wala naman, pwede siyang i-represent ni Pao. Pag meron namang lawyer si offended party, then there is now a private prosecutor. But take note that si private prosecutor is only uh, playing a supporting role. Kasi ang bida nga is si public prosecutor. Here comes now the importance of this provision. Sa practice, ganito ang nangyayari. Pag itong si private prosecutor is hindi nakakuha ng written authority and that written authority um, is must be approved by the court, then your private prosecutor will only be playing a supporting role. Kaya ang nangyayari, if si fiscal absent in a hearing, absent si fiscal, either nanganak ang asawa or may, may namatay, namatayan, then what will the judge do? The judge will reset all the hearings for that day. Kaya kahit present naman si judge, present yung lawyer ng akusado, present yung lawyer ng offended party, pag wala si fiscal, then 
hearing is not um, hearing will not push through because nobody will represent the people of the Philippines. But if itong si private prosecutor merong authority and his authority is approved by the court, even if this fiscal is absent, still the case will not will not be reset. It will push through because this private prosecutor is authorized to prosecute the criminal case. This private prosecutor is authorized to prosecute the case even in the absence of a public prosecutor. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng provision na ito. Let's go now to another topic, the adultery and concubinage. Take note that these are private crimes, and according to the Supreme Court, the vital and essential distinction between public and private crimes is that if we are talking about a private crime, the control is with the injured person or the offended party. Control as to what? Control as to the criminal liability and control as to the criminal responsibility of the offending person or the accused. So, pag pinag-uusapan ang private crimes, palagi ang may last say is the injured person or the offended party. Pag gusto niyang iurong ang case or ayaw niyang magsampa ng kaso, then the, the state cannot do anything. The state cannot do anything because the control again is with the injured person or the offended party. Let's go to Article 344 of your revised penal code. Prosecution of the crimes of adultery and concubinage. The crimes of adultery and concubinage shall not be prosecuted except upon a complaint filed by the offended spouse. This is echoed by your rule 110 because again your article 344 is the substantive law and your rule 110 is your procedural law second paragraph of rule 110 states that the offended party cannot institute criminal prosecution of adultery and concubinage without including the guilty parties. So you have to include the guilty parties because if you are going to read Article 333, adultery, take note, ha, this is your criminal law. Adultery is committed not only by any married woman but it is also committed by the man by the man who has carnal knowledge of her knowing her to be married kaya dalawa ang guilty parties sa adultery and that is true also when you talk about article 334 the concubinage the husband and the concubine should be included so the offended party cannot institute criminal prosecution without including the guilty parties if both are alive nor in any case if the offended party has consented to the offense or pardoned the offenders. Kaya again, take note for your adultery and concubinage, there must be a complaint filed by the offended spouse. Another example of your private crime is the crime of seduction, abduction, and acts of lasciviousness. And since this is a private crime, there must be a complaint first filed by the offended party. But it is not only the offended party. Do not stop there because the parents of the offended party, his grandparents or guardian can also file this case but take note of the requirement of the rule they should be exercised successively the right to file the action granted to parents grandparents or guardian shall be exclusive of all other persons and shall be exercised successively in the order herein provided and do not stop there again because aside from these people the state 
can also file this case but take note of the qualifications. Merong criteria for the state to file these private crimes. Again, what is our basis? This is your Article 344 of the RPC. This is your substantive law. And the Rule 110 is your procedural law. The offenses of seduction, abduction, and acts of lasciviousness shall not be prosecuted except upon a complaint filed by the offended party, her parents, grandparents, or guardian, nor in any case if the offender has been expressly pardoned by any of them. And as far as the state is concerned, pwede lang mag-file ang state netong kasong to if, if he will meet the requirement. Number one is, if the offended party dies or becomes incapacitated before she can file the complaint. And number two, take nota, it is an end. She has no known parents, grandparents, or guardian. So that is the only time the state can file these cases. So pag-usapan natin si offended party. Take note that your offended party could either be somebody who is a minor or somebody who is of legal age. At ano ang sinasabi ng rules? Even if the offended party is a minor, still she has the right to initiate the prosecution of these offenses independently of her parents, grandparents, or guardian. Again, even if your offended party is a minor, still she can initiate the prosecution of these offenses independently of her parents, grandparents, or guardian. So, kailan lang papasok ang parents, lolo or lola, at guardian? Number one instance is if the offended party is incompetent or incapable of doing so. Then, parents, grandparents, and guardian could come in. Another instance is where when the offended party is a minor and this minor offended party fails to file the complaint. And then in that case, again, the parents, grandparents, or guardian may file the case of seduction, abduction, or acts of lasciviousness. Just take note though that when it comes to these people, they have to exercise the right successively. So, hindi pwedeng pangunahan ng lolo at lola ang mga magulang. They should be exercised successively in the order herein provided. Next topic is your defamation. Take note that yung defamation na sinasabi dito is imputing to the offenses mentioned like the adultery, concubinage, seduction, abduction, and acts of lasciviousness. So, hindi ito yung defamation na nasa isip nyo. Dapat it must be uh, imputing to these offenses. So, ano ang sinasabi ng rules? It shall be brought at the instance of and upon complaint filed by the offended party. Last is your special laws. As far as your special laws is concerned, they shall be governed by the provision of the special law.